Good afternoon. Today I want to talk about something called social capital. And I'm Jenny and I'm a student here at the EFCL. People with extensive social connections, linking them to people with diverse resources, tend to be more hired, housed, healthy, and happy. This is a simple way of stating the impact of social capital. I took this quote from the City of Calgary's publication, Positive Social Ties, and I've provided the link here because it's a great overview of what social capital is and how it can function at the neighborhood level. It explores how, import how important social networks, connections, and community connectedness is to our overall well-being. Now, defining social capital is not a simple thing. There isn't one theory of social capital but pretty much it's about the value of our social connections. The word capital was historically linked to things like money or material resources, but economists have realized that a big part of how successful economies are is dependent on how well their social structures function. Social capital is linked to money in the sense that it often refers to how we leverage relationships or connections in our environment to either get things done as a group or to access something as an individual. So the most straightforward and commonly used example of social capital is someone looking for a job. They will likely reach out to their personal contacts, their former boss, friends, or colleagues to find the connections that they need to get the job that they want. And that's not to say they won't also depend on their resume and the quality of their experience. An over-dependence on social capital um, quickly becomes something more like nepotism. But we've all been in situations where knowing the right person or people can really help. Um, and I want to point out based on this graphic that social capital isn't just about the lines between people, connecting people. It also sort of refers to that inter, like in between space. It's a really nuanced theory and that's why there's so many theories about social capital. So it's not just the connections, it's also what that results in, the higher sense of belonging, the higher sense of connectedness. Um, and so when we're measuring social capital in communities, it becomes a very complicated thing. This is one graphic, there's also a ton that you can find online that sort of lend themselves to different understandings of how social capital functions. There's three main proponents or um, theories that are kind of within social capital, three kinds of social capital, and these are common to most understandings of it. These are bonding capital, bridging capital, and linking capital. Now, bonding capital is the links between people with common identity, like family, really close friends, people who share your culture or ethnicity. Bridging capital, these are the links that stretch beyond shared identity to colleagues, friends of friends, associates, that kind of thing. Linking social capital refers to the links between people further or lower down the social ladder is how this explains it, but I think it's more helpful or less like elitist sounding. Um, it's really about people with more or less social connections. Bridging networks are often referred to in literature um, talking about new immigrant experiences. Often you find that new immigrants or refugees have really strong bonding capital with close families or with in their ethnocultural group, but they're weak in bridging capital. And bridging capital is the most useful when it comes to getting jobs or kind of getting ahead in education, that kind of thing. Linking social capital is probably the most relevant at the community level. And here's an illustration of linking capital. Um, I've learned that the local shelter needs socks through my friend that works there. So through my close bridging networks. So I leverage my connection to my boss, who would be, or so yeah, so my intimate connections, and then I go to my bridging connections to talk to my boss, who then asks his boss or her boss um, if the organization will donate a thousand pairs of socks. So in this way, the various levels of my social capital are connected through linking capital to attain a resource or to get something done in the community. Linking capital is probably the most relevant to community leagues, and you'll find that social capital is often used at the level of a community or a neighborhood. Neighborhoods where people have strong social connections and high rates of social capital are able to get things done together for the benefit of their community. You can really see this when a healthy league is functioning well, and they're getting tons of stuff done to the benefit of their community. This is a graphic that I pulled from the International Federation of the Red Cross and the Red Crescent. They do a lot of work around social capital in their development internationally and locally. 
There's a lot of really interesting research that shows connected neighborhoods are safer to live in. They're more resilient, which means they're able to bounce back during disasters, and they're more involved in civic issues. You can take a minute to just look at the various areas on this graphic, which really gives a good sense of what high versus low social capital in your neighborhood might look like. So thank you for taking some time to explore this idea with me today. There is a lot I didn't cover, so if you are interested, um, it's something that's pretty easy to find YouTube videos on that really illustrate what social capital can look like. I think it's a term that's very interesting to community leagues because I would argue that leagues are a great way to increase social capital within the neighborhood. Thanks for taking the time and have a great day.